Let me start by reminding you of that conservation law with the aid of this simple toy. Clearly, all the momentum of one body is transferred to the other on impact. We can repeat it using effectively twice the mass. And the same thing happens. But now, let's use bodies of different masses. We can see that the heavier mass acquires a smaller speed. This becomes more interesting if we set both balls in motion. The momenta of both balls are being reversed on collision, and the heavier ball is clearly moving more slowly, just as demanded by the conservation of momentum. We are now going to combine these two ingredients of momentum conservation and the concepts of special relativity in a kind of space game. A spaceship at rest is designed to fire a projectile broadside. Now two spaceships at rest do the same thing, firing towards each other identical projectiles that move at equal speed. They collide and recoil along the line of fire. Let's concentrate just on the velocity of the projectiles before and after the collision. It's clear that the projectiles carry equal and opposite momenta. The total momentum is zero before the collision. And it is also zero after the collision. Momentum is conserved. No problem here, but that's not a very exciting game. So let's add another ingredient. Suppose we now move rapidly relative to one of the ships, or equivalently, one of the spaceships is moving rapidly relative to us. How do we perceive things? As you remember, lengths along the line of motion are contracted. All right, but how about the act of firing? You will also remember that time significantly slows down. So the act of firing the projectile from its mothership is slowed. As the spacecraft itself is moving, let's look at it again in a way to emphasize the transverse motion of the projectile. Well, so far there's nothing new. We have seen the conservation of momentum and the effects of special relativity. Now we combine them in a new game. Let the two spaceships move relatively to each other. Each of them fires its projectile. Let's look at that end on to concentrate on the transverse motion. Clearly, momentum conservation still holds. How does the same collision look when we move with that spaceship A? That is, when A is at rest relative to us. Obviously, A fires broadside. B, being in rapid motion, exhibits all the time-slowing effects we have discussed. How does the whole incident look? There's something different there. B fires first. 
changed. By changing frames, we've lost the simultaneity of firing. That's just what you would expect from our discussion before, but we want to concentrate on something different here. Let's look at it again from the end view. The transverse velocities of the two projectiles are different. Yet this is just another view of the collision where the two velocities were equal, where there is no doubt of momentum conservation. All that has changed is the frame of observation. So momentum should still be conserved. How do we reconcile this? The heavier ball is moving more slowly. There's the answer. Very good. Here, as anticipated, is a mass that grows and grows as the speed approaches the speed of light. And the effect of that is to prevent the speed of light ever being attained by a material body.